So the Battle of Kings contest, for those of you who aren't aware, is a global competition. It's actually the largest dealer-sponsored global bike build competition. And this year we've had over 100 dealers participate across the world in, I think, uh, 48 different markets. So kudos to you guys for making it this far. Just in the U.S. this year we've had over 42,000 votes for each one of the builders. So not just these three teams here, all the teams who participated, we owe you a debt of gratitude. Let's talk a little bit about the U.S. So the winner today will be going on to Milan, Italy to compete at ICMA as our U.S. representative. They'll be competing against four other countries across the world. And we know who's gonna win, right guys? U.S. So just for a little bit of information, in the United States, we had over 40 dealers participate, each building a bike in one of our categories, which were race, dirt, and chop. And today, you guys have been voting for your winner, your representative, to go to Milan, Italy, and represent the USA. Each of our participants also worked with a local school to help not only inspire the next generation of rider, but also customizer. And we're really excited about the activities that took place across the country. This is our fifth year of the Battle of the Kings, the biggest dealer customization contest in the world. I want to take uh, a little bit of time to talk about what we've seen in the, in the entrance this year. There are 300 Harley Davidson dealer entrants from around the world. The program builds on custom heritage and leadership. This is something that the company takes very seriously. We have a long ethos of letting our, our riders and our customers actually help us define the next trends. We pay very close attention to what happens out in the marketplace. So after a highly competitive national rounds, the best of the best have gone head to head in this global grand finale. And all the way from the U.S., we have the FX GTS Coast Glide from Laylaw's Harley Davidson. And the winner is Laylaw's Harley Davidson FX GTS Sport Glide. Hey, what's up guys? Matt here coming to you from Laidlaw's Harley-Davidson. So we got probably the biggest, nicest build of the 23 calendar year. And hopefully it's really good because it's been about three years in the making now. So back in 2019, we came out with a bike called the Coast Glide, which is a bike that represented something that was uh, in the culture here in Southern California and really up the whole West Coast. And it was a bike that we thought would be a great addition to the, the Harley-Davidson lineup. And so it, it's been a really cool part of our history at our dealership. And subsequently, we built a Coast Glide 2 where we tried to, again, up, up the, the level a little bit. We added a tour pack to it. 
and um, just change some of the things from a structural standpoint like the front end and whatnot um, on the Coast Glide 2 and stayed with the same overall theme of the bike and you know over the years we've had several customers you know build different variations of the Coast Glide with us here at the shop which has been an awesome experience to be involved with so many people's dream bikes but we really saved the, the title of Coast Glide for just the, the really upper echelon of these bikes that we build and so this is officially the Coast Glide 3 that we built here and we also feel like with every Coast Sky, we need to raise the bar just a little bit more. So on the Coast Glide 3, we really just went with the whole carbon fiber theme. And so pretty much every body piece on the bike is all carbon fiber. What's up guys, Steve Garcia here from Lay Loss Harley Davidson. Uh, gonna talk to you today about uh, Coast Glide 3. It's been a long time coming. Uh, this bike should have been done two years ago, but like uh, all things, COVID came into play. And uh, we had to put it on the back burner for Mr. Danley. Um, but thankfully, you know, we're here, bike's done. Um, everything that we wanted to do back then got done now, here in 2023. And uh, we're super stoked. Key points that we wanted to do on this, uh, Mr. Danley wanted carbon fiber work done. Carbon fiber, as you know, is now huge in the Harley Davidson world. So we wanted to tackle all the, all the carbon points. So first things first, uh, carbon fiber wheels. We wanted to run BST carbon fiber wheels on the Lower Rider S and we ran the upper and lower Fat Bob Triple Trees with the original Loretta S forks, uh, inverted forks. Hi, I'm Tony. I was the lead build on this uh, Lowrider S. We got a few things that we did to this bike that were special. We ran uh, uh, carbon fiber wheels and with these wheels in particular, they're for a fat bob, and with the fat bob, I couldn't fit them in the actual Lowrider S setup, so we had to use fat bob triple trees to accomplish this setup. In doing so, we had to actually widen out this fairing, had to modify it a little bit, grind it out to accept this wider triple tree. That's a big piece of this bike. I mean, I know we did a ton of other carbon parts on there, but the wheels just set it off. Seeing those wheels running down the road when that sun hits it, it's just, it's phenomenal. And one of the big problems we had when we first started doing this whole project was that there was a lot of pieces that we needed to be carbon fiber that just weren't available on the market. So we actually had to go to our friends over at Ghost Composites and they actually had to develop molds for this bike to create these carbon fiber pieces. Things like the saddlebags and the fairing on this bike. And so yeah, it's been a long time coming. We've had to do a lot of ingenuity you know, in partnership with a lot of these companies that we, that we work with. But I think the end result has been awesome. So above and beyond, we wanted to make the bike a little bit lighter with the carbon fiber and just have the whole performance orientation applied to the Coast Glide. Customer wanted a uh, good suspension, so we uh, reached out to Olin. Shout out to Olin Suspension. Uh, we threw in a drop-in kit, tied that into the front end, and it worked. Uh, we had to modify our own spacers, obviously, to make the front end work. We ran some Olin's front suspension on this set for the particular rider's weight, as well as rear, powder coated all the bracketry, the handles, just so it all blends in with the black look that he wanted to go with, the black alloy art rear turn signals, modified the rear struts, lay down license plate and some moons, tail light, and yeah, it's a pretty sleek looking motorcycle right here. So going back to carbon, we have a good relationship with Ghost Composites. Rick came through in, on this build like you couldn't imagine. We wanted Sport Glide bags, but we wanted them in carbon fiber. Like I said, this was a pre-COVID build. Nothing was available in carbon fiber. So pitched an idea to Rick, gave him a copy to make a mold, and he made it come to life. So shout out to Ghost for making probably one of the first sets of carbon fiber ST bags. We did the FXRT front fairing from Ghost Composites super lightweight. We wanted to make this bike as light as possible. Getting on this thing, it's crazy how light it is. Along with their carbon fiber front fender, their carbon fiber side covers, carbon fiber rear fender, and we modified their Road Glide 2021 and later fuel tank console. We wanted to run something different. I know on mine, we chopped the tabs and got rid of the console. Picked Tony's brain. I had a couple ideas on how we can make it work. Fortunate to have uh, Jerry Laylaw uh, weld up some uh, 
brackets for us and we made it work and I think it came out great. Then coming into the, the fuel tank, we ran a, a carbon fiber dash and we made a internal bracket on the bottom side so we didn't have to have any bolt holes to hold the front part of the, uh, the console on. Two and a one exhaust to accommodate the stage three. We went with SNS, it's 50 state legal, two and a one with the DB in it. Uh, try to give this bike as much back pressure as possible. He didn't want anything too loud. He lives by the beach. He didn't want to get caught up by CHP or anybody, any, any law enforcement like that. We also did a stage three on here which bumped this bike, which is a 21 Lowrider S from a 114 up to a 117. And of course, along with that stage three, you've got you know, more power than just the stock 117 is now. Uh, 117 stage three, and we did the Harley Davidson's tuner and auto tuner on this. So it's all compliant. Along with the, the lighter weight of the carbon fiber, the stage three engine build on here, you know, everything from the brakes, so the wheels as well are all you know, performance driven and really represent the best of the best in the Harley Davidson Cruiser world right now and in the custom world. So the car, everything from the carbon fiber wheels, lighten things up, give the bike a little bit more agility. We got the Galfer rotors on here with the radio mount brakes to really make the braking experience on this bike be the best that it can be. Uh, Galfer's rotors are really popular, um, but we wanted to make them different from all the, the common rotors that everybody runs. So we had Andrew's powder coating step in and match the red that's um, throughout the whole bike. Being that he owns a company, uh, his company colors was, were red. So he wanted to have a lot of red on the motorcycle. So we pitched, we reached out to Andrew's powder coating, gave him a sample of his red and they nailed it. Going back to the paint job, being with carbon fiber, he went with a dark smoke on it. So he darkens it just to kind of tie into all the black. Carbon fiber, you know, it, it varies, you know, from the clear that you use, it could be a bright gray, but Seth kind of adds his own little smoke tint to it and, it and it really pops. Seth at Aggressive Designs really did a great job. We wanted to not just paint over all the carbon fiber bodywork on this bike. We wanted to show the beauty of you know, the carbon fiber under there. So he did about 40% of the carbon fiber has been you know, covered up with paint in, in a really tasteful way. Obviously black and red were the two uh, primary colors that we wanted to use in the bills and I feel like you know Seth over at Aggressive Designs did a really good job on here. You know, a lot of the vendors on this bike build are very crucial where they actually come into the shop and make sure everything is color matched properly. Huge shout out to Andrew's powder coating as well that really helped out with all the little red details throughout the bike. You know, everything from you know the collars on the push rod tubes to the ends of the grips, to the ends of the foot pegs, and there's just so much detail work in this bike. And really, that's what, what separates a bike like this from all the other bikes, is this was a master plan build from the very start. We planned out the entire thing from the beginning and really took note of every single detail on this bike to make sure that everything was custom or special in some way. We wanted to keep as much carbon fiber on this bike as possible. So Seth overlaid real carbon fiber on the fuel tank, sanded it down a ton of man hours, did a paint job over that, a ton of clear and I think he nailed it. We went with Krause's uh, 10 inch uh, kickback risers and we also did the T-Rex plate on there. We went with Flymoto bars, powder coating them red. We did the traditional gauge relocation kit that's just common on these low red RSs. We wanted uh, the customer to have good visual of his speed, of his, ta of his tack, wanted to know where he was in RPM range and just being visible rather than looking down at the tank. So we went with the relocation kit for that. Um, we went with Hardy Davidson's uh, grip, powder coated it with the red. He's a big fan of short lever grips, so we went with PSR levers, fully adjustable on the fly. Obviously we have things like the Krauss handlebars that give you more of that moto upright style uh, ergonomic to the bike, which is very in line with the club scene that really the origination of this style and the look can be traced back to you know the club scene and really if you want to go back even further the, the FXR days and, and the FXRT fairing of course all, all ties into what now has evolved into this style. See so the bars we blacked out, uh, all the Krauss risers, the drag specialties mounts for the dual gauge setup, nice braided lines. Krauss T-Rex pullback plate with a roughly, I think it's a 10 inch pullback setup. The riders sit nice and deep in his seat. All internal braided line stuff. 
We had custom brake lines made by R1 Concepts. We went with Krause's radio caliper kit running their Brembos. So we needed a much longer uh, brake line. So shout out to R1 Concepts. They came in clutch and made us a custom front brake line with anodized red ends. Hit them up, man. They're, they're coming up. They're huge in the car world. They're getting into the bike scene and they nailed it. Shout out to Saddleman too, that was able to, to color match the seat and, and do like a red stitching. So lay down license plate, we went with the DPK. Super popular lay down license plate, bolts on. Uh, no modifications needed, it comes with a nice seal so it doesn't damage your paint. Went with Moon's MC's tail light. It's a smoke tail light, has the integrated turn signals on it. Super nice, it just takes away from not having those big bulky turn signals. And then we ran Alloy Arts front and rear turn signals, LEDs. Bottom of the fairing connected to the bracket and then coated all the lines in a braiding so they all match. Um, with the fairing, we wanted to run Clockworks windshields. Their products are great. Um, helps with the wind and just the styling looks amazing. Went with that. And the lighting, you know, we have Baja Designs, super bright uh, headlamp on here so people can see you coming from a mile away. Uh, we wanted to run the LP6 by Baja Designs. It's a really popular light that's out right now, super bright. It just helps being visible, you know. I know cell phones, everybody's on them. A lot of riders out here in California due to the traffic, those lights make you visible from miles away. We made a custom headlight cover. It's actually the stock Lexan glass. Due to the heat and the lumens that this light puts out, we wanted it to breathe. These lights, you know, they they need a lot of wind, they need a lot of cooling. We modified the lens so the LP6 would fit nice in there. It's nice and tight. So running these LP6s, there's a new company out there called Cali Rays Motos. Super cool guys, they make a plug and play harness. Just makes it easier to put this light on. Back in the day, you had to tamper with wiring, you had to add relays. Their kit is plug and play. And they now offer an accessory plug where you can add S1s. I wish that would have came out when I was doing my bike, just because it's easy. So shout out to Cali Rays. I went with the Bun King Crash Guard. Always want to keep the bike, you know, as safe as possible. Went with the style, low profile look on that. ARP bolts are pretty big, you know, motorcycle world right now. So we ran ARP bolts just to hold the rotors. I think it made it pop. Riding the bike, you know, we took it down to PCH, which is where we filmed our original video of the, of the Coast Glide. And the bike was awesome. You know, lane splitting, ripping down the highway, hitting the coast on it. I mean, there's just nothing better than, than riding one of these bikes down Highway 1 in California. So a bike like this, and really one of, one of the main objectives in building the Coast Glide from, from when it's originated back in 2019 was to build a bike that could be used for a lot of different things, like a Swiss Army knife type of, type of a build. And so this bike definitely coincides with our original vision. It just takes it to the next level, right? So if you want a bike to rip around town, go through the canyons, go fast, accelerate hard out of, out of a stoplight, all that stuff, but it's also a bike that you still maintain all the functionality of a touring bike. So you've got the storage, you've got the bags that are removable, so you've got the versatility there. You've got the fairing up front, so going down the freeway, you, you know, have all the wind deflection properties of this FXRT fairing as well. So it really is a bike that you can do everything on and you don't feel like you're pigeonholed into touring or you're pigeonholed into local rips and whatnot. This is a bike that you just own the one bike and you're gonna be happy with pretty much anything you do. So uh, just super excited about this bike, man. I know the customer's super stoked. He's been, you know, we've been going back and forth on emails and text messages and, you know, the day is finally here. I changed a couple things on here that I thought were just outdated from two years ago. He gave me his, you know, 100% support. On some, some I didn't even ask, I just did it. So when he came in, he was kind of like just thrown off, but he loves it. So super stoked, Coast Glide 1 and 2 were super cool bikes back when they came out and just to see how far we've come along with the technology and what we can do now just to kind of make it better. I think we nailed it on this one and uh, just happy to, to be a part of it again. Shout out to Tony for, you know, knocking it out. That dude's super talented, I can't thank him enough. Just for being patient with me, you know, him and I work great together and we just make it work. So shout out to Tony for being patient and knocking it out, that dude's amazing. A lot of the, the core insignias we have on the bike, like the Coast Glide on the bottom of the fairing and the, the picture of California with the bear uh, on the inside of the fairing is all the same that we've done on all three of our Coast Glides. And so 
There's certain markings that we have on the bike just to make it more of an official Coast Glide in our series. And you know, hopefully there's more. Hopefully we're not gonna stop at number three. Hopefully there's a four or five and, and who knows how long this will go. Like I said, man, we present to you Coast Glide 3. I wanna close with a special thanks to Craig Danley, who's been such a loyal customer and more importantly, friend to the Laidlaw family over the years. He's got such a rad motorcycle life journey that I wanted to include in this video, but honestly, it's too long and I just wouldn't do it justice by trying to cram everything in here. So I think what I might do is a podcast with him in the near future, but I wanted to thank Craig with entrusting us in such a special build, one that I hope is probably the best motorcycle he's ever owned. For those of you who'd like to see this bike in person, it will be on display on our main showroom from April 8th to April 15th. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.